Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture. Very pleased to say I am joined now by Luchasaurus himself. Luchasaurus, thank you so much for chatting to us today. Hey, how you doing, man? It's great to be here. Very good, very good. How are you? I'm, you know, I'm pretty good. Uh, uh, the uh, let's see, um, what what day is it? What year is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you know, coming off of the um, All Out. It's, um, you know, I'm just training now for TV. It was a really great response from everybody. Everyone seemed to really like what I did. So I'm, gonna try, I'm just working on more ideas like that and to try to keep the crowd excited about me. Yeah, I mean, a fantastic uh, performance from you. Uh, as you mentioned, at All Out uh, alongside Marco Stunt and Jungle Boy against SCU. Um, just speaking about you and, and Jungle Boy, you are cult favorites amongst, yeah. amongst the fans. That must be amazing for you. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, they've taken to our whole idea here and we didn't, you know, we didn't really think about it. We've known each other for 10 years and we mm. didn't really think about teaming together. And then um, I wanted to wrestle him because I knew he was local and he was trying to, to go places. And then all of a sudden he got on um, Joey Janela's game changer stuff and he started to blow up. And finally, you know, Joey Ryan brought him into bar rest and he's like, Oh, I want to team you guys up. And so we were like, Hey, that's kind of cool. Jungle boy and a dinosaur. Let's, uh, you know, let's try something. And then I think a fan may have suggested or something that he rides out on my shoulders and we did it. And this is like early February and the reaction that the bar wrestling fans are kind of like the PWG fans, a lot mm. of the same faces, a little bit more of a fun atmosphere or not a serious, serious wrestling atmosphere, but people do have serious matches there. But some of those hardcore fans that would boo me for no reason, just because they did that, they couldn't even help but smile when they saw the act and we just like, wow, we right away clicked. And we're like, this could be something that people just take to. So we really push for it. And we're lucky that our bosses are the young bucks who are just open to such crazy ideas. <laughs> and, and next thing you know, everyone seems to really like it, which is great. No, I said an amazing visual when uh, you two come out, you work so well together in the ring. Uh, and I saw the thing on your Twitter a while back that you were met at a training camp like 10 years ago or something. Yeah, that's where we both kind of first found a wrestling school out in Los Angeles. And uh, he was like 10 and 11 or something like that. I was much, much older. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we started at the same time. We both kind of went off and did other things. I went and finished college. And then he was – and then I got signed by WWE and did a reality show. He went to high school. <laughs> believe that. But uh, we, we finally came back around and we kept on re like kind of bumping into each other at different times. And when I was doing Rich Underground, I bumped into him in some classes. And it's really cool that we finally were able to put it together 10 years later. Uh, you mentioned your uh, degree there, of course, yep. uh, the thing that a lot of people mention. Has there as, as yet been speak of a, a school reunion? Because I sense that would be rather unique of, you know, everyone else with master's degrees going off and doing slightly different things than than wrestling as a dinosaur well they actually right um they, they actually already put my uh, picture up in the history department at my really office. and they did a whole article on me in their newspaper uh they're they're all excited about it because you know I'm a historian actually united kingdom was my my main emphasis is medieval really? history yeah so i mean i've actually still never been but the 12th century uh, literature from the United Kingdom is really what I studied for years. And uh, I was a, so I'm a medievalist in Los Angeles. So that, that department's already pretty small. Uh, <laughs> and there's not so many history majors doing things like I did anymore. So it's really cool to show that, hey, you know, a history major can make it just in a little different <laughs> area. I'd love to give the commencement speech one year in the mask yeah. and everything. I think, that'd that'd be, be I think that'd be pretty cool. So I, I'm really happy that it, I'm giving some of this, my school some uh, notoriety, uh, and also it's pretty cool to be able to transition something like that into a completely different realm. Well, I'm sure I am speak for UK fans when we say we'd love to see you over here and you can see some of the sights of, of, of uh, the UK as well. Uh, so for those who don't know, how does a dinosaur get into wrestling? Uh, well, you know... For for my species, it's been pretty it's been pretty difficult to get into wrestling um, over the years. They've they've kind of marginalized us and kept us in museums on display. But <laughs> when that's not happening, um, I you know being a, a dinosaur that's also a historian getting into wrestling, I, I personally have been a fan of it since I was a child. So mm -hmm. I always wanted to be in wrestling. I just didn't really know. This is like 2009, 10. I didn't really know where to go until someone pointed me in the direction of a school. And I, I couldn't believe there was actually wrestling schools. It was still kind of kayfabe in my mind, right? I didn't really know. 
And as soon as I got in there, I got really excited. And three months into like practice, I broke my wrist, of course, because I didn't know what I was doing. But that motivated me more, motivated me to get into gymnastics. It motivated me to get into different forms of combat, just to kind of have a well-rounded background. Because before that, I was pretty much just someone that lifted weights. And um, that really changed my whole um, movement capabilities. And it wasn't until much later that I figured out how to put those kind of elements into matches as a bigger guy and make it work. But it was me kind of just finally getting into that wrestling school because I was a fan my whole life and because I found a local one somehow while I was you know, busy doing history. And it just kind of all clicked. And very quickly I got signed and it was too soon for me. So it almost kind of ruined it for me and ruined the whole process. And I'm glad I got a chance to come back to the Indies and like kind of hone my character. Yeah, and am I right in thinking that the whole Luchasaurus character partially came about? I, mean, I know you spoke uh, with Chris Van Vliet a little bit about it, about Dusty Rhodes' influence on that, yeah. but also partially because of a, a chant that you slightly misheard. Absolutely, yeah. So it did start. So Lucha Underground gave me a second chance uh, to wrestle after I had left WWE and did a reality show and really thought there was nothing else out there. The Indies hadn't really hit their boom in 2014, 15 like they did the next year, at least in my head. I didn't know. So mm. I thought I was kind of done. Lucha Underground gave me a shot and they wanted me, and I want to do a character that I've been working on with Dusty. I still was holding on to it. And this is Judas character that we just didn't know how to place it, but we knew we wanted to use the fact that I'm a historian. I have a master's degree. I can talk somewhat mm. coherently <laughs> at times. Um, but also I have an interesting opposing look with tattoos. And so me and Dusty have been working on this idea that really the only thing missing from Dusty's vision was the mask. I think. And then Lucha Underground gave me a mask. It, it wasn't a mask that I really liked. So immediately I had them. It was a giant snake head mm -hmm. with, with nothing. Uh, it was completely covering my head. And I was like, let's make this like Kane. I just, I love Kane. I'm a big fan of Kane. And I was like, if I'm going to wear a mask, I want to be like Kane. So I, I, we cut it up. So it's kind of like this one now. This is, it's not the same mask, but I was supposed to be a giant snake. I come to the ring and I'm very nervous because I hadn't been in the ring in two years. And the crowd starts chanting something at Lucha Underground because they always do. And I was, you know, wrecking fools, kicks and choke slams. And I thought I was doing good. And I, I heard a chant. It sounded like they said, you just started. And I'm like, damn, they're that hardcore here. They, they realize that I haven't wrestled in a while or that I'm a greenhorn. I'm new. Man, I must have really sucked. And I went to the back and Johnny Mundo, John Hennigan, who is one of my, my closest friends, he's like, hey, man, that was great. I think you got a new gimmick. I'm like, what are you talking about? They were chanting Luchasaurus. I'm like, oh, <laughs> What is that? He's like, I don't know, man. I guess it's a wrestling dinosaur, but you're, you might as well run with it. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? We don't know how much Lucha Underground will film, and I want to get back onto the Indies, and I want to maybe parlay off of this character somewhat. So I was like, let's go for it. And I just started to develop it on my own, and there's a lot of bumps in the road to get to where I'm at. But uh, ultimately, it was because the fans kind of adopted the name for me that I became the Lucha Source. And it's funny because they chanted it there in the temple, in front of, I guess it's what, 500 to 1,000 people max in there. But everywhere I've gone, crowds really get behind the chant. And mm. I didn't realize it would transition to 10,000 people, but it's the same infectious feeling, I guess. And people just like to chant this. And I've always thought this name is too cheesy or corny, and maybe we need to move on from it as I struggled to get over. But, you know, my friends always told me, my close friends like Trent, Beretta, John, Henning, they told me to stay with it. And mm. it's really Ryan, too. And they were right. Yeah, it clearly has paid off. So uh, you mentioned Kane there. Who's some of your like wrestling inspirations? Well, I wouldn't have been a fan at all if it wasn't for Bret Hart. Um, actually, growing up, that was my guy uh, when I was like 9, 10, and he was winning championships. Like, I lived and died with his matches. I was such a huge fan. Um, so when he kind of – when he left wrestling because of his injuries, I kind of trailed off. Like, when everyone was super into the Attitude Era, I was kind of losing a little interest in getting into other sports – just because I really liked the new generation, the style of Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Those were the guys I watched the most. And even before that, the Ultimate Warrior was the first thing that caught my eye when I was like seven years old. I said, Dad, I need to see this. So like those were the main beginning influences. Then as time went on, what got me back into wrestling actually was the Radar Superstar Edge. That character, when I was in college, I really just gravitated toward it. I could identify with it. I thought he was a cool heel. I liked the vibe. I'd always liked the heels. I'd like the, the cool heels, like NWO. Like, who did it? Uh, and then I got a, became a big fan of John Morrison because of his style, and he actually was one of the inspirations for me to get into more kicks and martial arts and gymnastics in my matches. And we actually met before I even got to WWE at a gymnastics center, 
doing parkour and we became best friends. He's always been a real influential guy in my career because of that. So those are probably the main guys that have like inspired me. And then going back and watching tapes as I've developed my character, Undertaker, uh, I think now is maybe the best guy for me of all time to study and the things that he can do in matches, the way he can command a crowd and being so stoic and not, you know, not kind of being too paid, you know, too, looking at the fans, a lot of guys, you know, will want to, too much. I think some guys are like too corny with how they work, react with the fans and he never did. It's all about his opponent. It's all about the moment. And they just come with whatever he does. That's something I really study now. Uh, now, of course, you are a part of All Elite Wrestling. What is it like being in there from the beginning and and what do you hope to achieve? Well, I'm really excited to be a part of it from the, the ground up. And I was working with uh, Ring of Honor before that. And I thought I was maybe going to sign with them and I'm glad it didn't work out. I really enjoyed that place. Mm -hmm. but I would have had a chance to work with Jungle Boy. And the fact that All Elite is so open to us just, hey, we want to do this storyline. Hey, I filmed this today. They're like, cool, we love it. Let's let's put it on. There's no micromanaging. There's no so far there's been no like stifling of our creativity. And that's what I need as a human being, as uh, someone that likes to, you know, as someone that's passionate about their art, is I need to feel creative and feel like I can and contribute without feeling like my I'm gonna get fired if I do something stupid. Mm -hmm. And they have such a great environment right now that my my bosses are the young bucks who are doing you know, moves on top of moves and matches. So if I ever want to do a crazy move, they're all about it. So right now, being a part of the ground floor of moving up, this is a really exciting time because we feel like we can actually make a change in the wrestling world. And hopefully that, you know, secures me personally and my family going mm. forward in a company because I'm, you know, I'm 34 now and I'm thinking about other things than just wrestling. Uh, obviously, you're, you're teaming with Jungle Boy at the moment. Uh, are there any guys you'd like to, to work with, whether that be uh, as part of a team or, or, or across the ring from you? Well, definitely, I don't see me and Jungle Boy breaking up anytime soon. I, I hope we stay together for a long time because the chemistry is so great. And, you know, I'm sure they can, you can think of a million storylines for us having a breakup at some point. But I'd love to have a long run with him. And I think across the ring, we obviously want to wrestle the Young Bucks. Uh, well, Kenny Omega would be a dream matchup for me, too, personally, because his style is really, watching his matches has really helped me understand um, a new style of wrestling after I left a WWE developmental and how you can be creative and create completely different matches out of things that I never thought were possible. So he's been a big inspiration. Um, obviously, uh, Pac would be someone I'd love to wrestle. I think our styles could blend amazingly. And um, I just love the way he's working his heel character right now. So there's really, and then Trent Barretta, I really want to get back in the ring with him. I've been in the ring a couple of times with him. He's one of my closest friends and he's like, he's almost, I feel like he's a Shawn Michaels to an undertaker for me in a way with the way he likes to put matches together is uh, people don't give him enough credit for how creative and how smart he is and what kind of star he really is. And I think it all leads about to show that. And I'm someone I would love to have like a long feud with at some point. Breaking quite a few misconceptions when it comes to big men as well in terms of wrestling. I mean, we, we were watching uh, All Out here at What Culture, and, you know, one of the main things we noticed is, you know, expect someone of your size to come in, especially when you're teaming with the likes of Jungle Boy and Marco Stunt and just do the, the you know, archetypal big man moves. But you you had intelligent feet to use a, uh, to use a wrestling expression, and, and you showcase, like you say, your gymnastic skills. Yeah, well... Thank you for that. Um, I think that it is important for me and my character to really display that there is more to a big man than meets the eye. And part of the reason, like, I, I part of this character was really a way of, of kind of rebelling against big men. In a sense, mm -hmm. I put on a dinosaur mask to show evolution almost of how a big man should move. And for me, though, it's tricky because I, I feel like I can do everything a smaller guy can do, but it's not about that. And I tried it for years and no one cared. I had to learn how to use it in a big man's psychology. And I had to understand how I can be an undertaker like force and presence and not throw away that character and yet still do the gymnastic stuff at the right times. Um, you know, I still haven't gone to the top rope or anything. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm getting a standing moonsault reaction that I never thought I would because that's like a warm up flip for me when I go to gymnastics practice. But it's just, the, I've learned over time, it's just the way you structure it because I still have to tell the story. I'm still this giant dinosaur monster that should be intimidating and should be able to crush people. But I can intelligently use acrobatics to my advantage to get into those positions. So everything I do has to mean something. I'm very cognizant of that and I'm really working hard at all times. I'm studying everything I do, things that people like, sometimes I hate and I break it down. I want to change these little details. 
one of my best friends is uh, one of the top stunt guys um, in the world. He he's doubled Superman a lot right now. He's working on Avatar, wow. uh, and he always helped. He, he's a big wrestling fan, and he his ideas and movement is on movement and how to work a character on screen has been tremendous help to me because he can see details that sometimes I can't see. So I try to use every resource I can to continue to demonstrate uh, what, what a big man can do responsibly uh, because I do want it to make sense. I do want to make the old school people happy because I respect that. And I do also want to show that, a, that we can put a new school twist on even a classic story. So Jumbo Boy is like my little kind of Xbox to my cane, but we're doing it in a new age way. Indeed. Um, now, on the most recent episode of Being the Elite, you uh, had your say on Barney the Dinosaur, of course. You've got a, a checkered history, let's say, with him. I just want to run through a few of the uh, infamous dinosaurs or things or people related to dinosaurs and get your thoughts on that. Is that all right? Sure. Let's go. OK. Uh, let's start off with uh, Yoshi from Super Mario. Oh, well, you know, what? actually, Yoshi's man's best friend. And I'm a huge Mario fan myself, so the video game console I play is Nintendo. Um, that's my name, main go-to. So Yoshi's always been someone that's been in my good graces. He, he works with his little buddy who's riding on his shoulders. So he's a little bit of an inspiration. Uh, Yoshi's a good egg, shall we say. Okay. Um, Cassius Ono dressing as a dinosaur in NXT. <laughs> um, well, you know what? I never really like when a man dresses in a dinosaur costume. I think it's kind of an antiquated thing. You just don't want to see that in 2019. But um, I respect him a lot. I've worked with him a lot in the past. He was there when I was there. Uh, I think he's also, he's also a guy that I love to study, by the way. Um, so I'm going to give him a pass just because of how good I think he is in the ring. Uh, Akade using dinosaurs as part of his entrance at New Beginning Osaka. You know, the thing is, is that it's a double-edged sword because I love the fact that you know you anytime you bring dinosaurs into the spotlight it's a good thing but it can also be a bad thing depending on how you do it um, I'm okay with that just because once again like let's spotlight dinosaurs for once I feel like we've been just kind of brushed aside for so long um, once they're in the spotlight then we can start talking about you know how you should treat them in 2019 how we should look at them how should they be added to society respected what are their values and ideals. So I'm, I'm glad that it's just becoming a topic, a hot topic online mm. and in the media. Uh, now, I know you're a big fan of Jurassic Park. With your opinions of, of Jeff Goldblum in particular? Oh, he's one of uh, he's one of my main role models. And that's somebody actually, if we could ever set that up to get him at one of the shows. Um, oh. God, you know, I'm not sure that could be done. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to talk out of turn or sound like Mark or anything. I mean, but like if he could come out and just do a life finds the way thing for me or that I might just retire right there. Hey, go back to the tar pits. That's all. I mean, I don't think I could ever pass that. Uh, but if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for him, I don't know if I would have had the, uh, the emotional intelligence to really become a full fledged dinosaur in modern society. Uh, just a few more the TV shows, dinosaurs and the land before time. Um, I never really watched dinosaurs. Um, but Land Before Time, I was a big fan of. The, so I got to say, I, I enjoyed that one. I think, once again, those are well done. The, there's nothing wrong with those. It's just the, the one I have a problem with, honestly, is the Barney one. And, and that's the one that sticks in my craw. And I think we've kind of worked it out. I, I got it off my chest the other day. And I think as long as people just understand that dinosaurs, you know, need to – it, you can't be. You just need to cast real dinosaurs to play dinosaurs. That's all. You know, if you want a dinosaur educating our children, that's great. But let's just have a real dinosaur. Uh, one final one I want to show you, which you may not be aware of. Uh, Arsenal Football Club here in the UK have a mascot, which I'm going to try and show you now, yep. called Gunnosaurus. Ooh. Well, I think that's a perfect reason. I, actually, you should fly me in to to confront that guy. I think that's okay. what they need to do. And. Um, I'm just going to let him know I, that the spinning hook kick comes really fast. But, uh, <laughs> hell, you know, maybe I have another job after if this doesn't work out. I can come over there and, and mask up. And I think okay. I do better. Definitely a feud I would love to see. Uh, very quickly, going to run through, through some Twitter questions I got sent when I said I was going to be interviewing you. Uh, Peter asks, dinosaur on mother or father's side, or perhaps both? Um, well, it's been so long, it's hard for me to actually remember. Uh, <laughs> I have to go check the records, I guess. I just know that... Um, the, the there is you know half of my blood is dinosaur and the other half is lucha um but you know D dna records for us seem to be very scarce mm. so um you know i've taken a lot of concussions over the years uh, 
So I, I can kind of I can kind of remember there being a, a motherly dinosaur figure in my life, and I'm gonna probably say it was mother, but I don't want to get it wrong in case I offend the uh, the ancestors. I'd have to honestly I have to ask my uncle, mm. but I'm estranged from him, and he lives up in Lake Lochness. So if I'm ever up there, um, I might have to go visit the, the lake and see. But I just haven't talked to him in so long. Uh, we will, yeah, we'll have to try and organize that. Uh, Jonathan Royer, aka J Rock, says, other than history and wrestling, what other hobbies or activities do you enjoy? Um, other than history and wrestling, well, I really, like I said, I, I'm a big fan of uh, gymnastics and uh, martial arts, actually. And those, I mean, my time is pretty much 24 7 wrestling these days. If I'm not wrestling, I'm watching it and, or I'm training for it. And my training schedule is pretty strict. And most of the time, I'm working on different types of. Uh, Taekwondo kicks specifically for wrestling that I kind of turn into, you know, wrestling strikes. And then also I'm at the gymnastics centers a lot working on uh, my body, uh, my mobility and the things I do in the ring. So those are the main um, other things I'm doing on a daily basis. Um, I like movies a lot, scary movies, actually, you know, so that's that's something I'll go do with uh, when I'm not doing anything related to wrestling, I suppose. Watch one yeah, Josh, well, you mentioned that. Josh L. asks what your favorite movie is that isn't Jurassic Park. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good question. Um, my favorite movie that isn't Jurassic Park, I have a few. The Crow, I love, is a big oh, inspiration yeah. to me. Brandon Lee was a huge inspiration. Uh, Vanilla Sky actually was a big inspiration to me in my college years. Um, I really like the movie Sunshine, which is kind of like a horror sci-fi film. Yeah. Um, 28 Days Later, which uh, I know takes place up in uh, England. Uh, so there's a there's a bunch of horror movies I like. Um, Taxi Driver was one of my favorite classics of all time. Um, what else? I'm big into 80s movies. The Never Ending Story, I think. Yes. Something that relates to our – I think myself and Jungle Boy like to consider ourselves Atreyu and Valcor. And Marco Stunt is now the little boy reading the book that's bringing us to the human world, if you want a deep reference. Um so we're going to play on that thing going forward. And then also Conan the Barbarian is a huge inspiration on my belt. You see the double snake head, which mm -hmm. is a little Easter egg tribute to Conan the Barbarian. Uh, Josh Town asks a very interesting question. Josh asks, Josh asks, if Glacier, Glacier beat you, will you be extinct? <laughs> Only if he hits me with the Meteora. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Finally, uh, what do you think the future holds, not just for you, but for all elite, elite wrestling? Uh, I, ideally, it's a long future, and it's one that is you know, competitive and taken seriously right alongside of WWE, if not surpassing it. Uh, a lot of people talk about this war that's happening, and that's, it's fun to have competition. I don't mm -hmm. look at it as a war necessarily. I, I, think it's, I think more wrestling is good for everyone, and it, it elevates competition. And hopefully it's that AW creates jobs for wrestlers in the future over you know the next decade, 20 years, 30 years. And it just becomes a staple in the wrestling world. I think uh, my best way of analyzing it is, you know, with not only with WWE, but with New Japan Impact and now, of course, All Elite Wrestling. It's just a very exciting time to be a wrestling fan. And a wrestler say, you know, this is not something 10 years ago it wasn't impossible. It wasn't possible to have this opportunity. So I definitely am um, very um, thankful for it, and I'm taking it very seriously. Well, uh, Luchasaurus, it's been a pleasure to chat to you. One final question. Yes. What do you call a one-eyed dinosaur? I don't know what you call it. Do you think he saw us? I don't know how I feel about that joke, but I'm, it's okay. I'll let it go. It's early over here. I'm holding on to my little – this is Luchasaurus. Oh. This is his child. It's been good during this interview. Uh, King Charles, with a nice little English name. Uh, so right. we're gonna we're we're gonna be nice. Okay, that's very kind of you, uh, Luchasaurus. It's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you. Best of luck in all elite wrestling. We will hopefully see you over in the UK very soon. But for now, thanks so much for chatting to us. Thanks, I'm a big fan. Uh, and where the hell is Simon Miller? <laughs>